Are you looking at your blood tests, maybe reviewing your erythrocyte sedimentation rate and wondering what the optimal erythrocyte sedimentation rate is? My name is Dr. Terranella, and in this video, we're going to review some of the reference ranges for erythrocyte sedimentation rate and why they may be flawed in terms of being a little bit too lenient on where you should be targeting for your erythrocyte sedimentation rate if you want to have optimal health. My name is Dr. Terranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on inside your body and with your health. So if you like this information on lab testing, health, hormones, etc., click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaim, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at optimal erythrocyte sedimentation rate. In this video, we're going to look at the optimal erythrocyte sedimentation rate. As we discussed in a previous video, the erythrocyte sedimentation rate is the rate at which red blood cells fall or settle into a hematocrit tube. This rate can tell us about certain immune activity and also inflammation specifically. The standard reference range for sedimentation rate for Quest or any reference laboratory is going to be age and gender specific. For instance, at LabCorp, for a male, 0 to 50 years of age, the range is 0 to 15 millimeters per hour. As you get older, above 50, the range goes up from 0 to 30 millimeters per hour. For females, it's going to start at age 0 to 50, closer to 0 to 30, and above 50 for females. This is the lab core reference range is 0 to 40 millimeters per hour. Just as a comparison, also looked at the NIH reference values for erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And if you're less than 50, the range there for males is 0 to 15 millimeters and above 50 for males is less than 15 millimeters per hour. And then for females, less than 50, it's 20 millimeters per hour. And as you get above 50 for females, it's less than 30 millimeters per hour. So as you can see, there's a bit of a difference there between those two reference ranges. But the general idea is, yes, it's going to go up as you get older. And male, female, there's going to be a bit of a difference where it's going to run a little higher for females. So these are the stated or standard reference ranges that you'll see for this test. Of course, we know that the level is going to go up when you have more inflammation going on in your body and that this is a good test to use to track the amount of inflammation going on in your body and track the immune activity going on in your body. We also know that many common health issues increase with aging and that inflammation is a key driver or variable in most, but not all, chronic disease processes. So the question then, is there something inherent in the aging process independent of inflammation that's causing us to want to have a higher reference range for someone that's older? And if not, would we then want to change the reference range or reference interval that we're going to shoot for as we get older? So studies looking at this question or looking to answer this question find that when they correct for things like elevated fibrinogen, elevated glucose, elevated triglycerides, there's really not a lot of difference in the erythrocyte sedimentation rate as you get older. So if you have normal triglycerides, normal glucose, and normal fibrinogen, you actually have the same sedimentation rate that you would if you're 20 years old versus 70 years old. When things like blood sugar and triglycerides are elevated, they do create microinflammation in the blood vessels. With this kind of microinflammation, you're not going to get diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. And many times it's just going to be overlooked entirely because it's not going to increase the numbers, the sedimentation rate, or other inflammatory markers by a whole lot. However, if you're interested in optimal health, then you want your erythrocyte sedimentation rate to be in the optimal range. 
and possibly in a lower range than what your age-defined reference range would suggest. On the other hand, some inflammation is necessary and useful for our bodies to fight things like infections and is also needed for repair of damaged tissue and damaged, injured ligaments, tendons, etc. When chronic, though, that leads to more of a strain or drag on your immune system as it's trying to deal with the underlying cause of the inflammation. This can lead to more susceptibility to infections and overall degeneration in the underlying organ or tissue that that inflammation is present in. So if you're 75 and pretty healthy, your sedimentation rate should be the same as it is if you were similarly healthy and in your 20s. On average, though, most people that get into their seventh decade are not healthy. They do have some of this microinflammation going on, and that's why there is an adjusted reference range. So that doesn't necessarily mean that that's healthy for them to have that, though. Similarly, someone in their 20s may want to shoot for something closer to less than 10 or even less than 6 for an optimal range. Females, because they do have different hemoglobin, hematocrit, and red blood cells, are going to have slightly higher ranges than males, but they still should be looking for closer to this optimal range. I would say based on what I've seen and based on this research paper, less than 10 or possibly even less than 6 is where you should be shooting for for the optimal range. Now, of course, there's lots of things that can cause this microinflammation or macroinflammation that are above the reference range. There's lots of things that can be driving that, like autoimmune disease, these blood sugar issues and triglyceride issues that I referenced and diet or a good place to look at for uncovering why you might have slightly high sedimentation rate from this microinflammation. So how'd I do? Did that give you a better understanding of what the optimal erythrocyte sedimentation rate should be? Hopefully it does. If you do have questions on that topic, drop it in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your question. We'll see you next time.